uh, as always, that it's great uh, pleasure to come to San Diego. And uh, so, uh, so the, the topic that Zakia has introduced to you already, I'd like to thank the former speaker, Maria, from the DuPont Display, uh, talking about the beauty of the solution process. For those of you who don't know, actually, I came from DuPont Display. So um, uh, that was before they changed the name. Uh, so they not only produce high quality displays, they also produce high quality people. Yeah, so here, so um, uh, here's online. So I will go through the online uh, one by one. Okay, now let's change the gear to organic uh, photovoltaic, which is the reverse of the organic LEDs. We, we produce electricity through the photons. So the one important part that is uh, the so-called bauhetero junction, which is a mixture of two materials. You know the photovoltaic is basically about junction, how to create junction, how to separate the charges. So the cartoon on the right hand side showing that the, when the photon from the sun hits the, uh, the hetero junction here, create the electron hole pairs, and then uh, the electron hole pair need to be separate. So the two material, one is 660 PCVM, uh, uh, invented by Professor Fred Woodall, the other one is P3HT, and then the, when you mix these two materials, you create the hetero junction in a very nice and uh, uh, phase separation uh, regime. So the including the top and bottom contact, is very similar to what the organic LED is. So let me introduce you some terms. That this is a typical IV curve of the dark and the light of the solar cells. So um, the short circuit current is a current at the zero bias, and the open circuit voltage is the voltage at the zero current. And there is a thing called field factors. It's a ratio of this square versus uh, the largest square a dash line is surrounded. And then the finally, the power conversion efficient, that's what everybody talk about. The power conversion efficiency is PCE, is the power maximum, the square divided by incident uh, light, and the, which is the equal to the field factor times the, the GSC times the VOC. So once we determine the, the terms, then the, let's look at this busy chart that come from NREL. So this NREL chart tells us all this record-breaking efficiency of triple junction of different synthion solar cells, silicon solar cells. Here are the synthion solar cells. And then on the bottom are the new uh, comer. So organic photovoltaic is in here. You see the red dots here? So if you look at the trend of the past several years, it's actually going faster than uh, the rest of the groups. So if we can follow the prediction and I would say that in the 2015, which is about three years from now, we should be able to reach about 15% efficiency. So that's the, we hand this chart in our lab, so to remind the students, this is their, their goal, that uh, the, the whoever reached the goal, they can get a PhD degree. <laughs> so let's face reality. So there are three groups so far, I know that, uh, maybe some of that I, I did not realize, that um, reach a 10% efficiency. With the the first one I actually introduce is uh, Mitsubishi Chemical in Japan. They actually, um, the rumors or press release indicate they were already in the 11% range. So, um, of course, they did not disclose the device structure nor their um, um, materials. So the close example we can find are the group working with them from Tokyo University. They published a paper, and then this is a device structure called PIN structure. It's a P material. I is the, the intermixing layer between the N and P and then here is the end layers. So this is the, uh, the materials which uh, uh, we chemical use. Uh, Helio Tech uh, in Germany, they're based on the tendon structure of a small molecule uh, thermal evaporation. So this is, for those who you work on OLED, you're probably very familiar with the, the architecture here. So this is a double layered uh, tendon structure. And then um, uh, again, there's no details, um, but Professor Carl Leo's group published a paper Talking about this is the material system, we believe that uh, Heliotech uh, uses a similar system. So this is a tendon structure. I will talk more about the tendon structure. And the final one is the uh, UCLA Sumitomo that we, we reached 10.6% certified by NREL in the beginning of the year. Um, so the close example is the UCLA published 8.6% in the nature photonics about uh, six months ago. So. Uh, I, I will talk about details about the materials, so I will not go into the detail now. So the question we ask is, why 
tendon solar cell. So the reason is very simple. That is, in order to have the highest efficiency, the one simple trick is you want to cover everything under the sun. So this is the solar spectra, and then this is unfortunately one of the, this piece of HT. The, the absorption, because the molecular orbital reason is very limited to about uh, 300 nanometers width. So one can move this band back and forth by the, the different chemical design, but the absorption width is more or less about three to 400 nanometers. So compared to silicon 1.1 EV, is about the silicon can have the other absorption from 1.1 EV all the way to the UV. So we don't have that uh, advantage. But in addition to that, um, the, the beauty of the tendon solar cell is uh, even we have a, a polymer, which is, for example, a black hole polymer, one can probably absorb all the way to the infrared, but you lost a lot of energy of the high energy photons. So, so the solution of overcome these problems are tendon solar cells. So the tendon solar cell has those advantages. First is you stack two or more solar cells uh, with complementary absorption. The other one is the enhance the, the, the net absorption range. So for example, the, the green and the red one. You build two dials head to tail connected and then reduce the thermal loss of high energy photons. For example, the VOC that we talked about earlier is very often determined by the, the, the smallest the band age. So if we mix, if I have a student mixing polymers, which the, the result is not good. If we can have find a way to mix the materials, but even that is not good because the high energy photon absorbed by the green light will be lost. Uh, the, the will be lost as so much energy then you collect uh, is a low uh, energy electrons there. So, so a tendon solar cell by uh, an interconnecting layer or um, a tunnel junction borrowing the, the, the inorganic solar cell language is a nice solution to overcome the problem. So here's the tendon solar cell that we have, the band structure is joined here. So the trick is forming a metallic layer here so that you can separate the front cell and the back cells uh, uh, respectively. So the, the front cell and the, the front cell here is a piece of HT, is a white bacon polymer. And the back cell has been a problem. That's limited the, the tendon solar cell efficiency in the past. So the, the problem is that uh, there are too much overlap. If you look at these two, the two blue curves that uh, through the light bias, the two material has a much stronger overlap in the middle, such that the photocurrent reduced significantly if we use two materials. So my student, uh, Le Tian Do, um, when he finished a PhD uh, uh, defense, uh, I mean a prelim exam two years ago, so he decided to make a materials that uh, only are solving the infrared. So this is the PVDTT, DPP. For those who are not organic chemists, I'm, I'm on board with you, that is the long, long names that, that, that probably the easiest way for me to, to memorize that. P, uh, this is ICBA, it's a molecule uh, actually synthesized by uh, Professor Yong Fang Li's group in uh, uh, the China uh, the Institute of uh, Chemistry. And the PCBM, uh, c 50 PCB and this uh, piece of HD are all commercially available. So you can see this curve uh, are much more separate. I will show you the IPC curve later by the NREL. So the trick is that we have the piece of HT and, PC and the, um, the, the infrared polymer showing here. So you can have a complementary absorption all the way up to about 800 nanometers. So this is a single layer device that I showed you earlier, that, uh, the device architecture. You can take ITO and the uh, aluminum e electrode. So this is the material with 1.44 EV with high carrier mobility and then the uh, low homo uh, energy level to give the high uh, VOC, so the VOC gives about uh, 0.75 volts. So over here is the NREL uh, uh, certification chart that, um, so we send our paper to, to the General of Science, the science editor say, uh, please have NREL to certify that. Unfortunately, NREL takes about uh, three months to do the work, but they do a wonderful work, so, so beautiful work. So we. We certified to be 8.6% efficient. At that time, about a year ago, that was the highest efficiency uh, in the world. So that was, and then we submit a paper to Natural Photonics and they eventually publish. But you can see how fast this field moved. When the paper published, our world record no longer world record. So, so you really have to be the right time to do the right thing. 
Anyway, so um, so that's uh, that's come back uh, later. Uh, I'd like to thank to uh, Zakia Kafafi for for the Unreal certification. He probably she probably remembers that was in the ONR review we had at the time five percent efficiency in solar cell, and uh, that was uh, Zakia suggested me to contact. Um, uh, uh, Kiss Emery of Enrio to do the certification. That turned out to be a very nice teamwork. So you can see that I draw a blue blue line here that is a 640 nanometer. You can see that these two material has fairly nice separation of the absorption. So each one have the nice um, contribute to a nice photocurrent. So um, over here is the our 10.6 percent efficiency. The material is actually from Sumitomo. You can see in this material the 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 for the absorption is actually expanded to 900 nanometer. So let's let me go back. So this is about 800, 850 the most. So expanding to 900 nanometers. So that's why our efficiency from 8.6 to jump to 10.6 percent because of one additional material from uh, Sumitomo Chemical. So this turned out to be a very nice collaboration uh, from them with Sumitomo that uh, they have a lot of a library of different conjugate polymers allow us to to work with them. So we, s we later we submit the same uh, to Enrio for certification is 10.6%. Uh, internally, we actually reach uh, above 11%. But once we do the encapsulation, the degradation electro happens that, uh, you know, Maria mentioned that earlier, that that takes into the consideration. So I'd like to answer a question that is, um, the challenge is organic photovoltaic. That uh, when Zakia sent me an email, say, Young, don't just talk about your work, but talk about the future as well. I said, sure, no problem. So we know that the, the, the photovoltaic can be divided into photocurrent, VOC, and field factor. And then the lifetime and the, the scale up. And the, uh, the DuPont display talked about, about scale up, so I will skip that. But the, the, the important issue of the, the organic solar cell or any photovoltaic is that how much efficiency drops when the scale up is happens. So here at Helio Tech recently talked about they can retain 90% of the efficiency in the laboratory when transferred to large scales. So that's a very important number. I, at UCA, we cannot do that. We can probably do about 70% retain, uh, retaining uh, efficiency. The lifetime, uh, Mike at Stanford, that tests about PCH, TPCBM solar cells. So in one of the device, they show seven to 10 years of the, uh, the lifetime. So so that's very encouraging news. So with my coverage, I will mainly focus on the, the, the GSC so, and the VOC. So let's look at the, our uh, close cousin, DSSC, so the Migreso cell. That, um, they have about 90% uh, uh, EQE or IPCE, the external quantum efficiency. That's amazingly high. You mean 100 photons comes in, you collect 90, 90 electrons or 90 charges. Compared to us, we have only 60%. So they have 12% 12, 12 efficiency, we have about 10.6%. So, so the, the, the reason is we, we use tendon solar cell, we have a much broader coverage compared to the uh, DSSC. But one thing we, can, we should ask is how come our solar cell efficiency, the EQE is so low? Can we reach 90% uh, uh, EQE curve? So that's one of the goal that um, everybody is pursuing to, to reach higher, higher uh, EQE curve or, or current. So how can we do that? So for fixed material system that one can do is um, have higher mobility, higher carrier lifetime, and uh, uh, better uh, purif uh, purification, less defects. So you might wonder in the solid state physics, we tell me, Young, you're talking about actually one thing. If we can encourage the carrier lifetime, the mobility will be longer, uh, indicate that the, the material is, will be pure. So that's true. And then also, if we have to design new material, we have to design new material to pick up more photons. The lower band gap and enhance the absorption coefficient. In, in, in fact, the polymer co absorption coefficient is pretty high already because uh, it's a one-dimensional uh, semiconductor chain. The, the density of state is pretty high. So how to enhance a better system to even higher is important. And then, the, but the reason is, is the enhanced the absorption coefficient is important is because if you look most of the organic photovoltaic polymer so far is about 1,000 angstrom, about 100 nanometer. It's, it's not thick enough. So we, 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 we miss a lot of photons there. 
So if we can have higher mobility, we can make the film thicker. On the other hand, we can also enhance absorption coefficient. And the other part is uh, optical enhancement. Plasmatic effect, for example, or light trapping. Uh, recently, there is a ring code, a different group, uh, Jimman Bowles group, and uh, also the group in uh, Princeton, um, uh, uh, Lingo's group, talking about the ring code system. And then pyramid electrode has been uh, popularly used in the inorganic sy system. The other issue is which is critically important and uh, doing very well in inorganic semiconductor, but not so well in organic. That is, this, this data is from Richard King. Uh, from spectral lab. You can see different uh, band gap of the inorganic solar cells. The, the, there is a called WOC. The WOC is the band gap divided minus VOC. The difference is about 0.4 both. So no matter the large or small band gap the inorganic semiconductor has, they lost about 0.4 both. So on the other hand, 1.1 EV silicon, they can about 0.7 uh, volt VOC. For the organic system, we have this called, I call the VOC deficit. That is a paper recently published by Jenny Nelson somehow. Oh yeah, here it is a reference. That he says that the, the VOC is the, the minimum, the band gap divided minus by E, delta E minimum. Let me go to the chart here. That is, for example, one have the p 3 HT, you have to take away about 0.3 EV of the external binding energy separation. And then there's a free carry uh, re recombination about 0.4 EV. So if you add 0.3 and 0.4, it's about 0.7 EV here. So that's the, the, the we, I call it VOC deficit. For the inorganic, they do not have the, the first uh, 0.3 volts. So that's why they get the 0.4 volt. For, for our low bank polymer system that uh, we at UCLA, we reach VOC about 0.74 EV, 0.74 volts, which is very close to 0.7 volts, WOC. So this is good. However, for the white gap polymer, for example, P3HT, it's still about one volt. So we, we have about 0.3 volts uh, in the room to improve. How to do that, I don't know. That's why we have so many graduate students in the lab try to try to solve the problem. And then with that, um, I'd like to change the subject. So that's more or less my, 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 my uh, uh, OPV part. I'd like to introduce, introduce you several important progress recently uh, done at UCLA. That is, we have invented a new type of the silver nanowire electrode. Silver nanowire has been known for a long time. And then the, what we have done is a combination of silver nanowire and metal uh, oxide nanoparticle. So we achieved so-called fused the silver nanowire. So what? What was the, the trick? That is, we applied the titanium uh, so gel uh, solution uh, nanoparticle to treat uh, the silver nanowire, and then subsequently we use a PSS to as overcoat. So the, the electrode is fairly transparent. The transparency can be as high as about 90% transparency. And then the beauty of that is the silver nanowire in the past has been several problems. First is the wire did not cross each other. And number two is that um, the, um, the material does not stick to the surface. So you can use a finger to wipe out the silver nanowire. So in that case, one really cannot do any process. So what we have done here is by uh, uh, Dr. Zhu, uh, is a postdoc in our group and who recently uh, left, uh, is that he mixed with a titanium nanoparticle. And during the drying process, the, you can see this is as in a picture, you can see this bright spot are the the, the trophy gem of the electron in the SEM chart. Once we put the uh, um, titanium nan uh, nanoparticle, you can see that the bright spot disappear largely, and then this is with P dot. So you can see once the, the film dries, the silver nanowire actually come contact each other, so that the surface resistance uh, dropped uh, significantly. So what we have here is about 80%, 85% transmission with about 10 to 20, 15 to 20 uh, ohm per square uh, surface resistance. So this is a very excited uh, um, progress and depends on the required transparency and the conductivity and one can tune that, uh, of course. So look what we have. We have a transparent, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you, uh, IR absorption polymer and then a transparent electrode. So IR absorption polymer is more or less transparent to the eye. So, so 
I'd like to introduce uh, the UCLA uh, transparent OPV called TOPV. So this is what we have done. We have built a solar cell using a typical uh, standard uh, configuration, except on the top electro was a spin code TiO2 tree with the titanium uh, oxide uh, nanoparticle. This is a solar cell. I mean, the, the laboratory scale is about a quarter the size of it. But this film is actually a complete solar cell with the ITO and the, the, the our IR polymer and the silver nanowire. So this is very interesting because our polymer is largely uh, transparent in the visible range. And then the ideal, of the, the transparent OPV, uh, you, what you want is a material which is no absorption in the visible range. And IRR uh, infrared polymer actually more or less satisfy this, this, this requirement. So that's very exciting. And then uh, we reach about uh, the reference device with opaque electro is 6%. The uh, illumined, the, the transparent uh, uh, solar cell is about 4%. Depends on which side you shine the light. 3.8 to 4% efficiency. That's, that's quite, quite amazing, judging by the, the transparencies. And the other issue I'd like to use the final few minutes to ask is, what can we learn from OPV research? We know there are a lot of criticized about OPV, particularly from the inorganic field. That is, OPV has no market share, OPV has short lifetime, and then the by all means, OPV got a lot of publicity because we have the highest number of publications. So, I have to ask is that how can we learn from OPV? And in our group, Zakia just mentioned, we also work on the inorganic CIG and CGTS. I'd like to introduce the full solution process CIG and, C, um, CIG and CISS solar cells. And this is done by uh, the Dr. Chong, he just recently got his PhD, Brian Bob, uh, Dr. Zhu, and uh, uh, myself. So, so, what can we learn from the, the low cost that Maria mentioned about the solution process? We know that the typical CIG, which is a commercial product, by the way, is done by sputtering. Right? So this is a, a glass substrate molly, and then the CIG is by sputtering or, or, or the three-stage uh, thermal evaporation. Over here is the anti-material CDS layer and then the top window layers. So this is a, a, the, the CDS layer often it has to break the vacuum down by the so-called chemical vapor, the uh, chemical best position. So on the other hand, is the sputtering, liquid coating, and then sputtering. This is a complicated process, let me tell you. So at UCLA, what we have done in the past five years, we work on the CISS or CIGS solution process. We take a, dissolve the, the, the metal in the liquid, just like a polymer process. So we are able to uh, coat the films. So this is molly, CISS, CDS, but on the top, it still has to do the sputtering of the zinc oxide and ITO. Our efficiency actually improved from the 0% all the way to about, right now it's about 11 or 12% uh, through this process. So with our silver nano wire electrodes, so this is what we have done. That is, we have demonstrated, except the molly layer, we have demonstrated everything here from the bottom to top solution process. On the other hand, we can probably go to Santa Barbara, borrow Maria's coder and say, hey, Let's code, rather than doing this, the display, let's turn, turn DuPont, DuPont display into DuPont solar energy to do the, the, the printing uh, of the CISS uh, solar cell or CIGS solar cells. So this is very exciting. This is actually completely changed the pyramid of the, of the inorganic solar cell manufacturing process. How about the performance? The red curve is the solution process. The blue curve is the sputtering process. Our red curve actually is better. And this is not just in our solution, uh, in our system. We also obtain the, the tri-stage CIGS uh, solar cell from, uh, from Ingrid in our Enreal. We apply our solution process window layer, and it works. The performance is more or less the same. So I would consider this is actually a very important achievement that borrow from the, the OPV and apply to the CIGS field. So so that's really uh, the excitement. So let me bring my summary out. So the summary that we have demonstrated a polymer tendon solar cell to beyond 10% efficiency. So this technology promising to, to bring the OPV to the market, but it takes time, I have to tell you. We also demonstrate a few uh, silver nanowire electro for highly transparent uh, OPV or TOPV uh, with 70% transmission and about 4% power conversion efficiency. 
So the challenge of OPP has been discussed. I think 20% uh, power conversion is possible. If I had reached 90% EQE, and the VOC is only 0.7 volts lower than the, the band gap, and the fuel factor keeps 70%. I should think that with that, with our tendon solar cells, the 20% power conversion efficiency is possible. And then I'd like to thank, this is our group. I'd like to thank uh, Ingrid of the NREL and the town, Marietti and the Keith Emery of NREL, the Keith and the town for the measurement and Ingrid for providing our CIGS solar cells. And the uh, uh, chemical from uh, Sumitomo I highly uh, appreciate. And then uh, Solomon is our company and the ONR and FOSR and NSF and also UC Discovery Grant provide the necessary uh, research grant. And this is our, the groups of the, the, the students who are actually working on the project. Thank you very much.